And this audio is about invisible versus visible proof. And a picture is slapped on as the video. That kind of is the point of the audio. You see a picture, one or more, and you hear a voice. Those are visible audio, you know, audible material. But for all that, you don't know if the picture you see on screen is the same as the person talking. Do you? You really don't know. If you see the mouth move at the same time the sound comes out, you have a certain degree of faith that the person on screen talking with the sound coming out at the same time is in fact the person uh, you know claiming to upload do the video but you actually don't know that either in fact one of the problems that I have with my camera is that the real me never quite shows up on camera even when it's really me making the video sometimes I have good luck in black and white but the lighting has to be just right and I can never figure out what it was that made it work the last time even so all you see even if it were right all you see is a face talking on the video claiming to be X, Y, or Z person. Real name or fake name doesn't matter. You actually don't know if that's the real person. Because there's so many things a person can do to mimic or gerrymander or jerry rig what you can see in here. That's the problem we have with anything that's visible. It is subject to interpretation it is subject to manipulation and therefore anything in life that we think we see is not necessarily how do you want to call it true even when it's in front of our eyes even when it's in our ears this is much more compounded this problem is much more compounded by things that are real but invisible there are a lot of things in life even before we deal with the God question there are a lot of things in life that are true but invisible up until recently <clears throat> cells always existed they make up your the biological house you live in cells always existed but we couldn't see them until we had microscopes so you basically took it on faith that there were somehow little animals as it were I mean you know the ancients varied in how they described it there was some knowledge of cells existing but they didn't know what to call it so they called it by various names but nobody could see them so for all intents and purposes they were invisible it wasn't until recently that we could see light years away with clarity the ancients could see the stars too and probably better than we can at least with the naked eye but they took a lot of stuff on faith about what those stars were and planets and all the rest of it they used them for navigation so everybody had a pretty thorough knowledge of the stars at the time for that purpose but they made up all kinds of stuff to try to explain them and so do we still in spite of our advanced technology you see what I'm getting at today we can see more of the small and the distant than we used to but even so we don't really have enough data to be determinative or certain that what we think we see is what we see that's the problem with materiality it's even a bigger problem with immateriality like numbers numbers are immaterial 
they don't have any mass, they don't have any energy, they are the fundamental building blocks of the universe. And we've known that since time immemorial, and we've been using numbers since time immemorial. They seem to form laws about how the universe functions. And even in today's physics and cosmology, biology, we see, as it were, those laws in action. But where did the laws come from? And the laws themselves are immaterial. The same thing is true of your thought. Nobody can crack open your brain and read it like a hard drive. Nobody can find the specific thoughts and memories in your brain. They can, they, the most they can do is they can stimulate certain parts of the brain and say, well, this is where this information is stored, but they can't read it. So that begs the question of whether you as a person are simply biological material or whether you yourself are immaterial. And that's where we have to get into the God question. Because if the real you is immaterial, then how did you come to exist? How does an immaterial beget an immaterial? And, you know, the ancients have been, you know, talking about that for centuries. Aristotle even did a treatise on it called On the Soul. He was trying to back into how it all works. And this is where the God question comes in. Is our real existence the biological material we see, which starts and ends? Or do we have an existence prior to living in this biological house? Or an existence after living in this biological house? And that's where you get all the religions of the world trying to answer that question. Now the atheist argues that the material is all there is, <clears throat> And if God existed, he should manifest himself in a material way. Okay, but here's the problem the atheist has. He cannot disprove God's existence. Because if God is immaterial by nature, God's own existence cannot be manifest by material means. The material is always middle data. It is always inconclusive. The immaterial, by contrast, is more determinable, as it were, by theoretical and abstract thinking. But even so, the most you can do in the material world is observe it operating. So if God is operating on the material world, until you know God, you can't tell the material evidence of God in the world by whichever definition of God you want to pick. So, the invisible being proved, the invisible truth being proved, here now, of a, a, one or more definitions of God existing, is going to require more than a material means. You're going to have to get into immaterial means, but what are they? Well, I just suggested, too, logic, abstraction, principle, the coherence of it, and specifically the coherence of it. Like, we can prove math pretty easily because there's a coherence, a predictability and a coherence. Okay, but how do you do that about a person allegedly called God? And my answer to you is, I don't, it doesn't seem appropriate, let alone, uh, what do you want to call it, desirable, that if God exists, there's no communication from this God to you. Obviously, if you're really immaterial, and God really made you, who, and he is immaterial, then he set up some kind of communication system that is immaterial. So you can know God from God, which means direct contact. Okay, and the atheist is going to turn around and rightly say, how do you know it's not hallucination? 
just like all these skeptics claim they got visions, they got, you know, somebody from the other side talking to them. How do you know that's true? How do you know when a Christian says, I had contact from God? How do you know that's true? How do you personally know God exists? There's really only one way for it to work that makes any sense. And that is, A, you have to get direct contact from this person, allegedly God. And then B, you have to test what you think you got as communication by means of something material. You see the interaction? There has to be an interaction between immaterial and material. That's exactly what science does, specifically mathematics and physics, is they first go to what they consider to be theoretical. That's like invisible God talking to you. And they test that. If God's talking to you, then what he says is going to have to make sense. It's going to have to make some kind of logical sense. It's going to have to, as it were, have a resonance and depict certain other things like if God exists and so do you also and he's communicating to you. He knows about your life. He knows things only you know. And if he exists and he's communicating to you and he wants to prove that it's really him, he's going to give you insight that you can test. That's all theoretical. That's all invisible. That's all thought. The closest counterpart to that in secular, you know, science would be theoretical physics, theoretical math. Okay? And I have to deal with that every day. And everything runs on it. So then you go to the material. If you got something from God, what material means can you use to vet it, to verify it? Well, you got your own life. And if some of this contact from God and information from God is about your own life and how, and specifically how God is involved in it, then you can test that materially with what you know of your own life. Secondly, if there really is a God and he's immaterial and you are also and he gives you immaterial contact that you know you're God, then there would be a coherence, a consistency, a set of principles, a set of values that would have to be written down somewhere that you could check, as it were, to test whether this God is really a God that, you know, is consistent with what you do know about the known world, the known universe, Morality, past, present, future. You see what I'm getting at? It's an interactive set of testing between immaterial and material that we need to prove and know and interact with God's own existence. Now, a lot of people are all hung up on that, pro or con. I mean, how are you going to be neutral to the question of God anyhow? How's anybody going to be neutral to that? That's a life, you know, that, that's a fundamental life question. If God exists and I think I've got some kind of contact from this God, or, you know, for the quacks, the spirit, then how am I going to go about verifying that this contact is accurate? And maybe I don't want to verify it because it might be too upsetting too shocking, too complicated, too something. Or maybe in the reverse. Oh, I'm all addicted to finding out now. I'm just going to grab onto every sort of supernatural thing. That's basically how humanity divides out. Some people, the whole idea of anything supernatural... It's just totally addicting, and they got to investigate and play with all of it. And they're not too good at telling the difference or sorting it out because they don't want to. They don't want to test it for sense. 
And then you got the flip side, you know, usually represented by at least a, a, a large number of, of atheists who say that anything that is allegedly supernatural has to be false. Because the only thing they trust is something they can see with their eyes or touch with their hands or hear with their ears. Well, I started this audio explaining why that's not conclusive or helpful. It's necessary, but by itself, it's not, not useful. There's not a thing in science that solely uses the material method. Not a thing. All science depends on math. Math is totally invisible. It's totally theoretical. It's totally what you think up in your head. And then somebody else sees what you think up in your head, and they examine it for sense, and maybe they find a couple of equations that you got wrong. And then maybe you fix them. Okay, but everything then ends up being consensus about what's invisible. Well, how is that different about consensus that God exists? See the problem? So even if you don't believe in God, you're living on the invisible. Science is wholly dependent on the invisible. That's what theory means. That's what hypothesis means. That's what all math means. Math is invisible. Always has been, always will be. So then how do you know, first, how the math got here? And second, how do you know that the math that's producing the conclusions, that's producing the interpretation of the visible evidence, how do you know that's all right? And the point of fact, no scientist will say it's all right. A true scientist will always say the data suggests. He will never go farther than that. Okay, well, the data suggests isn't good enough for a God question. You need certainty. And the only way you're going to get it is direct communication from God, which then you have to test. I wish there were a simpler answer. Well, I'm not sure I wish there were a simpler answer some days. But that's what you got to do. And if you're not willing to do it, then just know that all of your claims about no God existing are bogus. Because you're living on the invisible already and won't admit it. You're living on faith already and won't admit it. So why should anybody listen to your claims? The atheist cannot disprove God's existence and he won't go through the steps that he needs to go through in order to prove God's existence. And I don't want to make it look like the atheists are bad because they're not. The Christians, by the same contrast, won't go through the steps they need. And same is true for the Muslims or the Hindus or any other religion you care to name. People aren't willing to vet what they believe. But honey, in all events, what you believe is based on the invisible. So it's kind of pointless to insist on using only the visible to prove the invisible when that's never conclusive. So do you want conclusiveness? Yes or no? If yes, then honey, you got to ask the ceiling. Hi God, if you're up there, I need proof. Hi God, I know you're there, but I need, you know, I need more proof about what I think I know about you. If you're not willing to do that, then you don't want the invisible truth, and therefore the visible truth will always elude you. Peace out.